and I am gotten to know her just a little bit on the phone and then today and I love her. She is the real deal, girls, and so we are so happy you're here. Thank you. And I think you're okay too. <laughs> so we give you liberty and you can go if you need an hour, that's okay. Um, we may go we may go a little longer, so if some of you have commitments and your husbands want you home at a certain time, be released. But it's really hard to squish all the things that we try to do in two hours, so we're going to go a little over until probably 11.30, so anyway. I can be short and sweet. Come on. Just give it to you. Okay. 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 Picked by you for this very moment in this season. You raised her up for such a time as this, and I just pray that you would bless her as she blesses us. Amen. 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 I'm so happy to be with you. Uh, worship team, thank you, because that just makes such a difference. You brought us there. You brought us to that place where we could just relax and open up our arms and love him. And if you're uh, brought here by a friend and you have no idea what's going on, they tricked you, they got you here, it'll be fine, you'll be fine. Uh, one time I remember my granddaughter, uh, we have six grandkids, yes, act shocked when I have grandchildren, thank you. And our oldest is now a girl, she's 13 years old, but when she was just a little tiny thing, we were at church and I was raising my hands, and she tugged on me and she said, Grandma, why do you have your hands up? And I said, you know, it's one of those times you can't give a big spiritual dissertation on it. It was just, it's like, Bella, I just love him so much, I just feel like I want to touch him. And she said, oh. And then she went up. <laughs> and you know what? I think that is the beauty. It's just that purity of it. I think that's why we have that kindred spirit and why I feel kindred with you. Because it's like, after a while, everything else washes away. And you just say, you know what? I just love God. I love who he is. He's a good, good father, and I'm loved by him. And if you can get your doctrine down to just that, you're going to be fine. Okay? Now, Tom and I have, um, we have an a unusual, fun, um, sometimes not fun life. We, we now, our kids are grown. We're empty nesters. We have two children. They're both in their late 30s, and they're both in ministry and six grandkids. So we are having the time of our life, running around the world, preaching together, and, and it's great. And sometimes it's not great. Because you think, you know, you think travel is really glamorous, but it is not. It sucks right. sometimes. Yeah. So I just want you to feel a little bit sorry for me because it's not that easy all the time. But the thing is, is I find that women around the world, and we were just talking about how small the Christian family is, actually. You know, we are all... And even if you don't know Jesus, even if you're not a believer, it's the same stuff for all of us. Life happens to all of us, right? Reigns on the just and the unjust. That's what the Bible says. And so we all, I don't care what culture I'm in, I sit down with a woman, can be a completely different country, completely different culture, and it's the same stuff. It's the same attacks. The PMS... I love that. <laughs> I have been preaching for years. And yeah, I've been in ministry for 40 years, as long as I've been married to my husband. And you know what? I, I can bring it. I give it with all my heart. You know, I don't come up here with notes. It's just my scriptures. I'm just sharing out of my heart. But I'll tell you, I don't care how good the meeting is, I will walk away, and the minute I'm outside the door, I will get attacked. That's right. And I'll think, oh my God, what did I say that for? I'm an idiot. I'll go home and I'll moan all night. This is my thing after all this meeting. Like, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I'll think of things I said, and I'll just let out one of these, oh. And then Tom will go, stop it. Just stop it right now. I'm sure you did fine. This, this is after years of being married. He knows what I'm doing. Because according to Revelation, I think it's Revelation chapter 12, Satan's full-time job is to accuse you and make you feel like dirt. That's what he does. And so I don't care how long you're in it, he's never given up his, his day job. You know what I'm saying? It's never going to go away. But at some point in your life, you fall so in love. 
and you get a hold of who God is. You know, people are like, oh, we need to be culturally relevant, or we need to let people journey with us. The Bible says this, how will people know if nobody tells them? Tell people, but don't tell them out of this, I'm going to get a notch on my belt, one more person comes to God. Tell them because you have the cure. Yes. You have passion. You figured out, listen, I've lived life, and I've lived, I'm not a baby anymore. When I was a young girl and I just got born again, I kind of apologized for God. Well, I'm not sure, but I think, you know, I, he's a good God, but I know sometime. No, he's a good, good God. Period. End of story. I'm not making any more apologies. Yes, it probably is in menopause talking a little bit. But you know what? Turn it to your good. Turn that force to your good. It's like I'm not apologizing for God. He's good, and he's good all the time. And I may not understand all his ways, but I know he's good. Listen, how many in here have a smartphone? Okay, wow, almost everybody, okay? Right now, if every one of you Googled a question... Everyone a different question, you know, how many calories in a pack of cashews or how, how much does a human he head weigh, whatever. If every one of us did a different question, within a second, we would all have an answer on our phone. Okay, ladies, I don't know about you, but I'm blonde, and I'm like, what? Where's it coming from? Out of the air. How, how are you getting that answer and I'm getting another answer? Seriously, people, is that not blowing your mind? And then we question God? Really? I mean, we're questioning God? It's like, listen, he's big and he's present. And whether you believe him or not, he's there. And he changes people's lives. And he's had an effect in my life. And all the women in the world, like I said, you know, same stuff happens to all of us. My life is not perfect. I've had challenges. 40 years of marriage, you think it hasn't been without challenges? Okay, let me tell you, 20th year was a doozy, okay? Listen, it happens to all of us, but God makes a difference for those that call on him. In the message, it says in, uh, I think, Matthew chapter 11, somewhere it says, all those that call help God get help. So when I talk about God, it's like, listen, if you don't know him, I'm not talking out of, from a, a preacher standpoint. I'm talking from another woman to a woman. It's like, oh my gosh, get God in your life. You want him. You need him. You know, you think the devil's not real? You're wrong. He is real. There is good and there is evil. Even the world knows that. Yes. Even if you're not religious, you understand. You know, people that work in the police force, they know. They see evil on a daily basis. I've, I've talked to a lot of cops and said, that's how I came to Christ. Because I saw evil and I realized if there's evil, then there's good. God is the good. He's the good, good father. Yes! Yes! Okay. Now, I got this scripture for you girls. And when I come up, like I said, I don't do notes because one thing I figured out years ago is no matter what notes and how much I study, the minute I get up here, it is blown to the wind. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's like I never go there. So it's like Tom would always say, because he was seasoned in the ministry long before we married, he'd say, honey, don't bother. He'd say, listen, you go to the well and drink. Yeah. and enjoy the Lord and be yes. with him and grow in him. And when you get up, believe me, out of the abundance of the heart, your yeah. mouth's going to pour it out. Yeah. But what I do, yeah. I like to get the scriptures. I love the scriptures. When people say, um, well, God's just not speaking to me right now. I Okay, since I've become menopausal, I'm like, you know what? <laughs> Open your freaking Bible. <laughs> God is talking all the time. If you can't hear him here, read your Bible. That is not a joke. No. You know, you. I don't care how old you are in Jesus or how many times you've read it, this is where he's talking. Yeah. Listen to him while I start to fall asleep. Well, then walk when you're reading. Put it in your ear. Uh, spice up your love life. Get a different version. You know? <laughs> you know, to me, the versions are like this. The word of God is like the crystal clear prism. And when another version comes, it refracts the yeah. color that you didn't see before. Mm -hmm. You pick yeah. up the Amplified Bible and you're like, oh, mm -hmm. the message. 
I don't I care. Know. People's bad mouth the message. It brings light to me. Amen. You know, New King James, um, New Living Testament, whatever. Go spice up your love life. <laughs> Get into the Word of God, girls. Now, Holly, did you like this one? Holly Girth is, is on um, Encourage and on the internet with Day oh. Spring. And I okay. love her stuff. Okay, so she's not actually a person. No, here. she's not she's here. Like some famous person. <laughs> she's here in spirit. <laughs> okay, this cracks me up That's because funny. this is one of my favorite scriptures to preach on. Oh. And when I saw it, I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> and then I thought maybe I shared it because we've only been here one other time. And I thought maybe I shared it and then they took it from that. Okay, this is really good then because you haven't heard this before. Okay. <laughs> My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I'm coming. Okay, now, let me tell you something. You know what I love about being with you California girls is I'm a California girl, and I feel like I'm with my home team. I love it. I love it. Okay, so my favorite store is TJ Maxx and Home Goods. Yeah, very cool. I love those two stores. And... I hate that I'm this shallow, but I'm just going to tell you right now, you might walk out. But when I have a really crisis or bad day, um, I remember the first time this ever happened. I was crying, and it was, life was falling apart. And Tom said, my husband said, get in the car. And I got in the car, and he started driving. I said, where are we going? And then he pulled up to TJ Maxx. And I said, this is not going to fix my problem. You cannot just bring me to TJ Maxx and think I'm going to be all better about this. And he goes, just get out of the car. I'm like, Tom, I am not that shallow. I walked through the doors and went, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> this deep. I'm not kidding. I was like, water. And still to this day, that happens. Well, he knows. That I just need a little retail therapy at TJ Maxx or Home Goods, and I'm going to be fine. So I get in there, and, and he's very tolerant and very patient, man, but he's got his limit. And it is shorter than my limit at TJ Maxx. Okay, so he'll let me go for a little while, and then it'll come to the time where he's like, okay, enough, we got to go. We're getting out of here. But I've never, like those back aisles with all the home stuff, and I've never, I didn't go down every aisle yet and go through the piles of stuff, and, and he'll start calling, Susie, and I can hear him. And I'll go, I'm coming. But I'm not. I'm going, and then, and then through the, then what he would do, he figured out if he called me, he could hear where the ringer was. Now, first thing I get in TJ Maxx, ring her off. I am an obedient wife most of the time. This is my only one fault. And then I found that other women in the store would run interference from me. Women unite! You know, they'll be like pushing carts and blocking them all. I'm like, just run her aisle. I gotta see what's there. But he always says, Susie, I'm, and I always say, I'm coming. Okay, get where I'm going? Yeah. yeah. We do that to the Lord. Listen, ladies, here's, here's a simple truth. Shared experience breeds intimacy. If you don't have shared, now that can be good or bad. You have shared experience with the wrong person, you get the wrong kind of intimacy, okay? But it can be very good, too. You know, in marriages, we tell people, you need to do stuff together. Because if you don't have shared experience, your intimacy is going to wane. So I don't care, you know, I don't... It, this is strange to say, I'm a California girl. I'm not really big on going to the beach. It's not my thing. I, you know, I like inland. I'm, I'm a valley girl. You know, I want to be by the mountains or something. Tom's a surfer. And he always wants to look at the waves. To me, waves look the same every day. Why do we have to look at them? But I do it to have shared experience with him. He goes to TJ Maxx to have shared experience with me. Okay, it's the same thing with God. This isn't rocket science. If it was, <laughs> friend is rocket scientist. <laughs> but, you know, I, I would be out. This is just pure, simple truth. You've got to spend time with people yes. to fall in love with them, to know them, to understand them, to get intimate with them. God calls us every day. In Songs of Solomon, he says, listen, your voice is lovely to me. Your face is beautiful, and I love to hear the sweetness of your voice. But if you're not talking to him, you know, well, I don't know how to talk to God. Hey, Peggy and I, where's Peggy? Peggy, where'd Peggy go? She left. 
We had a great conversation last time I was here, you know, just about the simplistic beauty of the Lord's Prayer. Okay? Now, if you think, okay, I don't know how to talk to God. Well, it's, it's funny. We go to Christian bookstores filled with books on how to pray. And yet, Jesus, who would know better than Jesus? Jesus Christ himself says, pray this way. Okay? Now, I'm not against Christian bookstores or Christian authors. But you know what? Honestly, guys, get in, girls, get into your Bible. Okay? When Jesus said, pray this way, the Lord's Prayer, holy, completely perfect. You start out with this and you make it your own. Our Father, so you right away you're going to go into your Pledge of Allegiance wrote, uh, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, the kingdom of God. And, you know, and, and then it becomes wrote to us because we've heard it so much. It's like John 3.16. Forget the depth of meaning in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave. You know, we forget because we hear it so much. The Lord's Prayer, you know, our Father who's in heaven. God, you're in heaven. God, you're big. God, you're bigger than the internet. God, when I have questions, you can give them to me quicker than the internet. God, you're everywhere at all times. You made everything. You are more present in me than I am present in me. You are more present in this room than you were present. Do you understand that? You think the internet's big? God's amazing. Our Father who's in heaven. <coughs> holy. You're a good, good Father. Oh, yeah. You're a good, good Father. Do you understand when you start to pray that and you stop and think about it and you, and you pay attention to your words and you be present in them? God, you're big and you're good and you're holy and you're here. And I pray this. Your kingdom come and your will be done in my life. Jeremiah 29, 11. Know that scripture? Everybody yeah. knows it. Okay? We give it to all our teenagers. For God knows the plans he has for you, and they're for good. We're the future and a hope without calamity. Okay? So, our Father, listen. Lord, give us this day. No, no. Um, your kingdom come, your will be done. Okay? Now, Jeremiah 29, 11. That plan you have for my life, that blueprint that you wrote out in heaven, that the purposes and plans and heart's desires and, and more, the New Testament says more than I could hope than or imagine, all of that, I'm asking you right now, in my life, let it be done. I give you yeah. permission. I pray that for my kids. I pray that for my grandkids. I pray it for my friends. You know, when, I, when somebody's going through something, Lord, I pray all that beauty that you've ever intended for them, let it be done in their lives. In my grandbabies, in my children, in my husband, let it be done in his life. How perfect is that? Give us this day our daily bread. Listen, it doesn't, I can't have carbs, Lord, I'm off bread. It doesn't mean that. Okay, it means, bread is like a dirty word now. Thank you, Oprah, for saying you eat bread every day. I it, right? But give us this day our daily bread. It's, your, it's what you need. My sustenance, spiritually, physically, emotionally. That daily bread that's going to keep me alive. Listen, we all know, physically is important. Uh, the older I get, the more I understand how valuable health is as it's slipping away in little, little increments, you know? But, but also, we all know that if we don't have emotional needs met, we are a wreck. Mm -hmm. We just are. Lord, I need the daily bread. Feed me spiritually, emotionally, physically. Give me this day, Lord, my daily bread. I pray it for other people. Lord, what they need, bring substance to them. Perfect. Okay, what's the next one? Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive, Forgive us. us. Okay, girls, listen. Do I even need to go into that? <laughs> Science has figured out that if you harbor unforgiveness, it causes severe arthritis. Yes. What? Okay? Unforgiveness, hatred towards somebody, not forgiving somebody, builds up physically, not spiritually, not floaty stuff, physically builds up toxins in your body that are released into sickness in you. God, you're so smart. 
He made us. He knew. Listen, you're not going to do well with unforgiveness or hatred because I'm not hatred. And I am not unforgiveness. I am the God of love. I am love. And when I made you, I made you to for love, to operate in love, to walk in love, to eat love. And when you don't have love, it's not good for you. I never saw the donuts were gone. Just saying. Yes. <laughs> I had a half. I only had a half. Okay? So, when you learn to forgive somebody, listen, if you don't have forgiveness, you need to get forgiveness. I'm trying, Lord. You keep trying. You'll get there. I know that it's not always easy. Believe me. Trust me. You have no idea. I've got a great story, but no time for that now. It's not about me. Okay? You need to get forgiveness. You do what you can on a daily basis to ask the Lord to help you to forgive that person who spitefully used you, hurt you, abused you. It's easy to forgive people that accidentally hurt you because then it's like, oh, we didn't mean it. I can forgive you. But the Bible's not talking about that. It's talking about people that outright did it on purpose and knew they were going to destroy your heart and they did it anyways. God says, you need to pray. You need to forgive those people. I love that the scripture says this. It's all in there, girls. It's all written down. Pray for your enemies. Yeah. I'm telling you, there is no better remedy to get healed or find forgiveness than praying for the person that hurt you. Number one, when you pray for them, your heart begins to soften. You, you can't help it. You're in communion with the God of love. Your heart's going to soften towards them. Number two, you're releasing heaven into their lives. They're going to get better and more lovable. It's a win-win. Pray for your enemies. Pray daily. The more you hate them, pray that much more. Okay? Put, the, put them at the top of your prayer list, even above your kids. You know, because you, you don't, unless you hate your kids. Then <laughs> it's possible. Trust me, I know. My kids are great, but there have been moments that I thought, you know what, I brought you in, I can take you out. <laughs> I wanted to at times. So you pray for you and you need to forgive it. You know, it's interesting because at the end of the Lord's Prayer, what is the one thing the Lord reiterates? Forgiveness. Because he knows it'll kill you. It'll make you bitter and sour and horrible. It'll destroy you physically. You will have ailments and physical pain. You'll have mental pain. You'll have emotional pain. It's a lose, lose, lose. Forgive, even as your Father in Heaven's forgiven you. I, Lord, what else could I do? You love me. You forgive me. You love me no matter what. What else can I do but forgive? Okay, what's the next one? Lead us not into temptation. I love that, that we can pray that. I love the Lord is completely aware of this situation. You are going to be tempted. You live in a world full of hatred and temptation and things that want to draw you away from me. So I'm telling you this, you need to pray that you'd be led away from those temptations. It's almost God saying this, I'm trying to make it easier for you. I don't want you to be constantly battered. I, it's like us moms saying, honey, don't do that, do this, trust me. You do that, it's gonna hurt, okay? It's the same way with our father. If we ask our, our physical parents, the Bible says, for a gift, are they gonna give us a stone? What about God? He's a good, good father. So Lord, lead me away from those temptations, those things that are going to trip me up and just cause problems in my life. And then it ends with this. Listen, it doesn't end. But the next one is this. Um, deliver me from evil. Okay, now, on the lead me away from temptation and the deliver me from evil, two favorite things to pray for my grandkids right now. Lord, lead them away from temptation. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, I got a 13-year-old granddaughter. Mm -hmm. and, and fortunately, she's not 13 going on 17. Uh, my 5-year-old granddaughter is that one. <laughs> the 13-year-old. But, you know, I see her growing up into a beautiful woman. And she's developing now. And she's just drop-dead gorgeous. And I'm like, Lord, lead her away from temptation. Because I know what world she's coming into. We all know, don't we? Yeah. I know what I went through as a teenage girl. Lead her away from temptation, Lord. Deliver her from evil. Deliver her from evil. Keep the enemy far from her. 
keep demonic forces far from her. You know, when I, I was telling my story to Brenda, my new friend Brenda, just met her yesterday. I'm sleeping in her guest room. Thanks, Brenda. <laughs> I got two new Brendas in my life. I love them. But, you know, we're just sharing our story a little bit on the way here. And I was just saying, you know, as a teenage girl, uh, by 14, I was completely suicidal. I was like, this world stinks. I hate this world. You know, I men had just, like, men have one thing on their mind, and I'm sick of it. And I'm sick of fighting for my virginity. And, you know, I, I love women's meetings because you can say this stuff. I don't <laughs> preach this Sunday morning. <laughs> but, you know, things like that. And, and I just remember thinking, I hate this world. And I didn't know God. And I wasn't a church kid. And I was never raised in a church. I knew nothing about Jesus. And I remember I decided, that's it. I'm out of here. And it wasn't a teenage plea for attention, and I wasn't going to a youth group telling everybody I'm going to off myself. It was, <coughs> no, I'm, I'm going to kill myself. And I didn't tell anybody, and I was dead serious. And then I remember I said, you know, two weeks. I'm going to give, my, give myself two weeks to figure out why we're on this earth. Went to the library every day. Went to the religious section, because somehow I knew there was something about religion that people found help. I didn't know what, but I just felt like, well, I don't know where else to go. So I go to the religious section, and nothing, sadly. Now, I picked up books on being a Buddhist, and it didn't ring true. I picked up books on being Muslim. No, that's not, not going there. And, you know, Mormon, and Baptist, and Protestant, and Lutheran. And you know what it was? It was books full of doctrines. And I never just heard John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave. A book to know God could literally be one page. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. there was a God who made you and lost you. And he wanted you back. But the penalty for that darkness, because God is not sin and not death. And so it, it costs death. Mm -hmm. And to come back to God, there has to be death to come back and he brought his son and he gave his only son now only I think if you're not a mother I, I, I don't mean to offend you but as a mother you understand that it's like oh my word that's a big sacrifice that is a big sacrifice he gave his only son to pay the price to bring me back that's all I needed to hear why didn't somebody just tell me that nobody was telling me that until finally one day, the second to last day, where I was just had a backup plan, how to die, and if that doesn't work, I'll do this. Didn't tell anybody, was dead set on doing it. Um, went to school, which I very rarely showed up at school anymore because I was just sick of it. I was sick of everything. And um, went to school and some cheerleader, which I was not on, I was not, believe it or not, I was complete fearful introvert. I wore, the long blonde hair bleached. It's, this is not right. This is more real. <laughs> but um, you know, all I would wear all black clothes. Just a lot of story behind now. But anyways, I was trying to hide my body because you know, I used to have a hot body. I don't know what happened. <laughs> but um, it's gone. It's just it's faded out somewhere. <laughs> um, anyways, I wear a lot of black coats, and so the kids at school thought, and because my mom had gotten into tarot cards and such, which everybody Aww. was doing in the 70s, you know, in the early 70s, and so everybody thought I was a witch, which did not help me wanting to stick around. It's like, I'm not a witch. I wear a long black coat because I don't want any attention on me, and I wear my hair long and covering my face because I, a guy told me I was ugly, and, and so it was all this stupid stuff, and um. This girl comes up to me and she's a cheerleader. And it's like none of those people associated with me because they all thought I was a witch. So nobody, no, none of the cool, uh, popular girls came up to me. In fact, I had no friends left because everybody had just, and, and at the time I didn't quite understand what was going on. And some rumors had gone on about me from boys and weren't oh, true, true yeah. at all. I didn't sleep with anybody at that point. I mean, I, I didn't later either, just to yes. <laughs> Not if I had, it would have been fine. I would be forgiven. But um, anyways, she comes up. She goes, you got to come to this meeting, Susie. The fact that she knew my name was, like, massive. Wow. It's really important to try to learn people's names. Yeah. You know, it means a lot. And um, I was just like, she had me at Susie. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. A cheerleader knows my name. And then she said, if you come to this meeting, okay, Valley, 
Okay, like totally, like you'll get like this language, and like um, yeah, we'll just like put our hands on you, and you'll get this language. And I was like, okay, I've been going to seances with my mom. We've been moving the Ouija board around without hands, so spiritual realm was actually kind of familiar to me, but. I didn't know what she was talking about. And to be honest, I thought she meant French or German. Right. <laughs> so I, and then I thought for a minute, I thought, well, maybe everybody will like me if I speak another language. And I literally went to the meeting to get French or German, thinking it would make me popular in school. Well, needless to say, went into the meeting, um, and I heard the salvation message. Oh. Pure, simple, it was a Jesus Revolution days. It was a bunch of hippie guys with light, long hair and beards, much like today, but their hair was longer. Now it's the short hair and the big beard. And, and the guy talking just spelled it out. Jesus loves you. God loves you. You have a hole in your heart, and it's a black hole, and it makes you feel like you want to die. But God, nothing's going to ever fill that hole except for his son. And he wants you to know his son, and he wants you, and he loves you, and this is the way to get back to him. And he gave this picture that only a 15-year-old girl, you know, would really need. And he said, there's just chasm between you and God. And he sent his son to be the bridge so you could come across his son and get back to him and back to love and back to fulfillment, and back to what life is all about. And it was like bells. I was like, oh my gosh. And I, and all the books I looked at in the library, nothing, 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 nothing. When I heard that, yeah. that's true. Kids know truth. They do. They know when you're lying to them. They know when you're duping them. Um, they know truth. We have that ability. I knew it was truth. And I remember that night, came time. He said, if you want to know Jesus. Okay. So I was told this was a big meeting. I get to the door. It's 10 people. <laughs> okay. I wanted to turn around and leave because I did not want to be visible. I wanted to hide in a group of people. So I turned around the minute they opened the door and they said, no, 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 please come in here. I got to share this story because it's really cool. So I come in, sit in a circle. How uncomfortable is that? Did you need any more awkward than putting us in a circle so we're staring at each other? And I got my black coat, my long hair, and I just sat like this. No movement, no reaction. He's preaching the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ coming and dying on the cross for me. I am exploding inside. You would never know it by my face. I did not move for fear of what anybody would think of me. Comes time, he says, raise your hand. I am not raising my hand in a group of 10 people in a circle. And I'm, I'm wanting with every fiber of my being to raise my hand. I'm wanting this God. I want to know Jesus. Everything inside of me, you know, the, the Indian lure, the black dog, and white dog, one side is going, if you raise your hand, everybody's going to look at you and you're going to be further rejected. Nobody else in here is raising their hand. The other side, the Holy Spirit, the white dog, get that, was saying, Susie, raise your hand, raise your hand, raise your hand. And I, it was World War III inside of me. Nobody knew. You cannot judge people by their outward appearance. That's right. I, I did not move. They would have given up on me, honestly. Finally, the guy in a group of ten, when you say I give a salvation call eight times, <laughs> awkward. <laughs> awkward. Okay, like if I'm just talking to the table right now, right now, if you just want to know Jesus, just raise your hand. Just right now. If, if you want to know Jesus, just raise your hand up right now. Okay, if you're ready to know God. <laughs> three and that's awkward. Okay? Like he kept going and going and everything was mounting up inside of me until finally I was just like, ah! I, was just like I think the Holy Spirit literally said, oh for crying out And I just remember like, you know, not everybody has that great salvation story so I really am thankful for mine because I know some people say, Oh, I don't know, I think it was five or something. My kids, my kids were like five. They, they don't have the story I have. But I remember light coming in. And I remember it dispersing darkness and grossness. Now, it's funny. As soon as that happened, I felt that light. 
the guy sitting next to me reaches over, puts his arm around me, and guess what I thought? I stiffened up like a board. I'd had three attempted rapes. I, I, I was like, and the first thought was, this is like every other place with the same kind of people. And I headed for the door, but there was three girls in that meeting of 10. They met me at the door, and they're like, oh my gosh, Susie, we're so happy you met Jesus. And I'm like, oh, I thought that girl was hitting on me. And, <laughs> I, but you know, women, verbal, we're verbal, and we're, we say, well, you know, and it, it saved me. Yeah. You think a hug's not important? Yeah. It was really, it saved my life. Because yeah. what does the Bible say? When the word is planted, immediately, what happens? Yeah. The enemy's like, get it out of her life now. She's going to be trouble to me later. Oh, I'm trouble to him now. <laughs> you know? Right? <laughs> so, I mean, that, that, those hugs, you know, for me, when I walk into a room, you know, girls, listen, do this. I know you have your own stuff. I know you've got pain. I know you've got problems. Um, oh, let me tell you the romantic part of the story. <laughs> it was my husband who led me to Jesus. Oh. Oh. He doesn't really remember me, and I don't really remember oh. him that night. But this is what's cool. I know the plans I have for you. Oh, yeah. Okay, even before I knew Jesus, he had a plan for me. He's always had a plan for me before I even knew him. Everyone that doesn't know the Lord, there's a plan. And God said, I want to give you the plan. Know me. It's good. The plan's good. You're going to love it. So on that night, the Holy Spirit, Tom, I have never, ever since seen him give an altar call eight times. <laughs> right? You know, maybe three max. I don't even think he's done that. You know, the thing is, that night, the Holy Spirit was going, Tom, say it again. Susie, raise your hand. Tom, say it again. Susie, hand up now. Hand up. Tom, you know, I love that. He's a good, good father. Yes. And Tom just didn't give up. Well, my, my, needless to say, my life just changed after that. You know, what happens is, Isaiah 58, there's a passage, and it starts around verse 6. Now, how are we doing? We're doing okay. We're doing All right. Great. Now, I want to tell you something in Isaiah 58. I'm going to give it to you in the RSV, Revised Susie Version, because it's time to go over right now. And basically it says this, in the midst of your own darkness, in the midst of your own pain, in the midst of your own heartache and need, if you'll stretch forth your hand and go love somebody, you will be healed speedily. What? Number one, what I love about it, God is acknowledging he knows I'm not together yet. He knows I have pain. He knows I have darkness. He knows I have lack. And then what he's telling me to do is here's the, here's the remedy. Here's my prescription for you. I want you, when you walk into the, a door of any, any place you go, check yourself at the door. And I want you to look out and say, here I am, Lord, send me. And if it's a hug, just a hug, then go give the hug. If it's just go up and tell somebody they look amazing in that outfit, then go do that. If it's to tell somebody, um, you know, oh, you're, you guys are winters. I'm a spring, you're a winter. Whatever. Just do that thing. Forget about you because you will drown in you and your, excuse my French, but you will drown in your own crap. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Right. You will. Now, I can say that, right? Yes. 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 Some cultures, yes. they just about have a hard job. Freedom. Say that. Okay. <laughs> Proverbs 12.3. This is the scripture the Lord gave me before I came to you girls when I was praying. It says, you can't find firm footing in a swamp, but the life rooted in God stands firm. Wow. That's just so simple. And sometimes we find ourselves just stuck in a swamp. We, we're stuck in a swamp of circumstances, of bad feelings and bad thoughts and hurt and disappointment, and, and we have the blackness in us. We have the pain. We have the sickness is on us. Because, listen, life happens to everybody. You know, since I got born again, have I had problems? Yes, loads of them. Loads. I can fill books and books about them. Have I gotten through every problem? Yes, here I am. I ate a donut this morning. I'm here. Okay. I don't know anybody on Pinterest, but um, I got hooked on it for a while. I've kind of weaned off now because it was addictive. But I saw this thing and it said this, something to this effect. Up until this point in your life, 
your record for getting through bad days is 100%. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is. It's good. Brenda, you're here. Two bouts of cancer. Hello. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad to know you. Your record Amen. for getting through bad days. Girls, we need to take, it's when we go back to the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who's in heaven. Oh my gosh, you're amazing. When Philippians said, make your request known with thanksgiving. Why? Because God's an e egomaniac? No. Because he knows when you make your request known, and you begin to thank him for all he's done in your life, you begin to remember who he is in your life. That's right. Oh, yeah, when I thought I was going to die five years ago, you came. When I thought, you know, it was the end of the road and the storm was so big and so furious, I thought I'll never survive this, but I did. So you begin to thank him, and your faith builds, and you begin to understand. But, girls, it is simple, simple, simple. You don't spend time with the Lord, you're not going to know Him. You don't go to His Word, you're not going to find those scriptures that give you hope and strength yeah. and stir your faith. Without faith, the Bible says, it's impossible to please God. And it's not because He's evil maniac. It's because He knows you need faith to survive. If you don't have hope, you're not going to make it. People don't make it. People commit suicide daily. Right now, in this moment, somebody's offing themselves because they have no hope. So what are we? We, you know, Colossians 127, love this passage. There used to be a secret. And then one day God said, I want the secret out. I want it to be a secret no more. And the secret is this. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And then it goes on to say, it assures you that you will share in his glory. What is the glory of God? Everything that he is and has ever been. All love, all health, all peace. God, all that you are. If I get Christ in me, if I, you know, the simplicity, the beauty of simplicity of it is that one day, if you don't know, I don't know. This is my second time here. I don't know you if you don't know the Lord or not, but I'm telling you right now, get him. Get him. Okay? And this is what you do. Lord God, come into love my life. I give you permission right now to be my Lord and Savior. I ask you to forgive me my sins, to wash away the grime and all the garbage that it's attached itself to my life. Make me white as snow. Let your blood cover my life and make me new. Let me be your daughter. It's like a proposal, girls. I think it's easier to teach this to women than men sometimes. It's like a proposal. The Lord is on one knee and he's proposing to you. I want to be yours and I want you to be mine. And see, the thing is, I think it's cruel when women leave men hanging. Yes or no? You know, just give the guy a yes or no. And I think it's at that moment, sometimes it's like God's been on his knee, and he's calling you, yes or no? Yes! I say yes to you. I'm going to be yours. I'm going to marry you. I'm going to live with you. I'm going to walk with you through everything. Amen. I have never regretted it. Not one day. Not one day. I have been through storms. I would not, you know, obviously I have suicidal tendencies. I would not be here today had it not been for God in my life. You know, you can't find firm footing in a swamp. Get out of the swamp. Get, I almost said <laughs> Get out of the swamp, okay? Um, listen, Psalm 1, I gotta just read a couple scriptures. We're gonna come to ministry. Psalm 1. Two through three in the New Living. But they delight in the law of the Lord and they meditate on it day and night. And they are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit at each season. Their leaves never wither and they prosper in all they do. Girls, most of us that have been born again a long time, we know that passage. Think about it. Ponder it. Lord, I am planted by you. And the winds come, and the rains come, and the storms come, and life happens, but I don't wither. And my spirit gets stronger, and I prosper, and I grow fruit. And I have fruit that bears with the repentance that I once gave. I want to make a difference in this world. My biggest fear as a teenager was that I would live a life. I, my family wasn't rich. They had no money, basically. Um, you know, all my shopping was done at Sears on a credit card. And, you know, I just remember thinking, is this, this is it? <laughs> you know? And coming from the valley where there were a lot of my friends were rich, it was like, okay, well, that sucks. They've got stuff that I don't. And, 
And, you know, and I just remember thinking, I'm never going to amount to anything. But God always had a plan for my life. He always wanted me to make a difference. Christina Amanpour, you know her from CNN? Mm -hmm. She's a news reporter on CNN. Are you all Fox Watchers? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, she, she's this great reporter, and she always says to people, and it's very interesting, I know this is about her, she always says to people, did you make history today? Mm. Wow. And I thought, wow, that's a really good question. You know, I want to make history every day of my life. And it's not by being a famous guest speaker. It's not by being, you know, um, known or being in a stadium leading, leading thousands to Jesus. I want to make history every day in somebody's life. Mm -hmm. I want to encounter them and make them understand a God of love. Mm -hmm. I want to make them not feel like dirt. I want the, to show them that that dirt feeling you feel is not God, and it was never meant for you. I want to make history in people's lives every day. And I don't wake up in the morning like, you know how I get ready for a women's uh, meeting? I know you're going to think that I go into a prayer closet in my war room. That's, that's really a good idea, the war room. I don't go into my war room and I'm going to pray and beg God for a word for you all. You know what I do? I go get a pedicure. Because we all look at each other's toes. You know we do. <laughs> and I, I got a manicure because I thought, oh, they're going to be looking at my nails. Because I'm not really a manicure person, but I have short nails. I get a pedicure. I get a manicure. And I make sure I have something bright and a pretty color to look at. Because who wants to look at somebody that's all boring And if you're standing up front? You know what I mean? I want to see a little sparkle. I usually like a little sparkle or something up there. Because if I... And really a boring preacher, then at least you could say, well, she looked nice. <laughs> because every day of my life, I'm getting ready. Every day, Amen. I'm not going to the well Amen. for you. I'm going to sit at his feet and love him and be loved by him. Amen. And it makes me want to explode with love to other people. Not because I'm a loving person, because he's a loving person and he's in me. Amen. I share his glory. Girls, shared experience breeds intimacy. You know, where's my little card? Where's that little thing I was reading? This. When he calls you and says, you know, Brenda, I am safe. I know there's at least two Brenda's here. Brenda, come. Come see me. Come sit with me. Be with me. Let's talk. Read my word. I want to talk to you through it. I'm going to open your ears to it. We can't always be saying, oh, I'm coming right after, right after I unload the dishwasher and check my Facebook and... Listen, I love this because in the old days I used to travel with a small suitcase full of different versions of the Bible. So in case I needed to pull up one, and now I can just like, boom, boom, there it is. And it's, it's amazing, but it's also a detriment because I go downstairs in the morning and I open up my iPad and I'm going to do my one year, listen, one year Bible. You know, I'm not going to tell you you have to do it, but just to keep irrigated, do it. It's good. You know, I, I know it sucks when you get into Leviticus and Numbers and stuff. So I skim over a few things sometimes. But there's stuff in there that I God know, can talk really. to you in. Yep. Just get irrigated. Just get with them, be with them. But what happens is I go down, I open up my iPad, I go to my one year U version mm -hmm. application, and boom, up comes the banner about an Instagram like, oh, who liked me? And then a Facebook thing comes up, oh, it's whose birthday? And I can be lost instantly. Uh -huh. Discipline, girls. Mm -hmm. You know? Okay, it, it's, you know, husband, wife, it's, it's a picture of God in the church, right? So I get in the car with Tom, and he loves being with me. We're together 24 7, okay? <laughs> and he's more of a person that likes to be with somebody all the time. I'm kind of like a little Frida. Like, just, you drop me off at TG Maxx and go away. <laughs> just come back tomorrow, okay? <laughs> but, you know, um, he hates it when I get in the car and all of a sudden I start scrolling through Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and I'm a social networking junkie. And um, then he'll be like, hello. And I'm like, I'm with you. What else do you want? <laughs> and you know, God's with me, but he wants my attention. My, oh, I'm so demanded upon between God and my husband. Jeez, guys, just go <laughs> off and do something together. Give us a <laughs> It benefits me when I pay attention to my husband. There's a scripture in Proverbs, and it says this, He who tends a fig tree will eat of its fruit. Hmm. Mm. I saw that scripture when I was a young wife, and I thought, ooh, Tom's my fig tree. If I tend him, I will eat of his fruit. That's true. Now, if I tend God in my relationship with God, I will eat of his fruit. Win-win. 
Yeah. It's not rocket science. Get with God. Get with him. Talk with him. Don't give me excuses. I'm going to smack you if you come up here and give me an excuse. There's a way to do it. Well, I can't read very well anymore. You know what? It's on audio now. Put it in your ear and go for a walk. Then another win-win. You lose some, burn some calories and hear the word of God. Um, get a different version. Do what you got to do. Read your word. Talk to God. Well, I don't know what to say. The Lord's Prayer. I spelled it out for you. No more excuses. Use the Lord's Prayer and pray for your family and your children and your spouses and your friends that are in storms that are like, oh my gosh, I don't even believe they're going to survive it. Pray the Lord's Prayer over them. These are practical, simple truths that are almost all we need. You are going to continue with a 100% batting average of getting through storms. And if you're in a storm right now, you're going to get through it. You're going to make it. You know what the scripture says also? It says, do not forsake the gathering together of the saints. And as long as today is called today, encourage one another. This is why we have Galentines. Where's, where's the Galentine girl? We just watched a video of get, get, get it, gals? Galentine when you don't have a Valentine and we all get together. And <laughs> okay, because we get with each other and we remind each other of truth. It's why you have a guest speaker. I'm not a brilliant speaker, obviously. But what I'm doing is I'm reminding you God That's is right. good and he's good to you. That's right. So get with him. If you ignore him, it's going to be a problem. Not because he's mean, but because you're missing out on a vital relationship in your life. Read your word. Pray to God. Spend time with him. And girls, let me tell you something. When you walk in the door, anywhere you are, check your stuff. Okay? Check you. Like, vision, a coat rack. I'm going to take Susie off right here and check it. And I'm going to go and look and listen and be present. Be present wherever. Willie Nelson said this when they asked him what uh, wisdom he'd acquired over the years. You know who Willie Nelson is? Yeah. Long break, country yeah. singer. He said this. He said, I've learned wherever I am, be there. Hmm. Brilliant. Right? <laughs> when you come into church, be there. Stop thinking about you and your needs. Everybody has needs. You want to get healed of your needs? Go love somebody. Go encourage them in their need. You will be healed. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. That was so awesome. Wow. I don't want to have PMS today. Thank you. Um, let's pray this. Father, I just pray right now. First of all, I want to say this. If you're in this room and you don't know Jesus and you don't know God and you're thinking, what's this crazy lady talking about? I implore you right now. I beg you, ask Christ to come into your heart and to be your Lord and Savior. You don't need me. You don't need anybody. But you need to do it. You need to say yes. This is the day I say yes to you. I want to marry you. I want to love and be loved by you. Ask him to come into your heart. And I'm going to ask you this. If you do it, I want you to, the person that brought you, they obviously, they, had, they were sneaky and they got you in here. I want you to tell them and let them know because the enemy will want to pluck that seed out of your life as fast as it came in. Don't let them do it. Make it known. In fact, tell as many people as you can. Today I found Jesus. Today I asked him. And do not leave this room without telling somebody. I, I'm ready. Or even if you don't want to do it right now, say, pray for me to do it. And they'll do it. I promise you, they'll do it. Anybody in here will help you. And so, Father, I pray right now for every one of our hearts that are distracted and we forget who you are. And we forget that you're actually really good and that you really love us. And that you do have a plan. And even though we're not in the plan of our choosing right now, you've got a better one coming. I thank you, God, that if we're in, in, not in the hoped or imagined yet, that it's coming. It's coming. And I feel prophetically for some of you, you're saying, this is not what I hoped or imagined. And the Lord is saying to you right now, it's coming. It's coming. If it's not there, it's coming. So, Father, I pray this, that you would increase our hope and our faith, that you would stir up our faith, 
that you would awaken our hearts, that if we've forgotten our first love, woo us back, Lord. Woo us back with your gentleness, with your sweetness. Remind us for every woman, Lord, that comes to you in prayer and, and opens their Bible, Lord, I just pray that you'd meet them so vibrantly and remind them who you are. Awaken us, Father. We pray for your touch right now. I know, Lord, you're more in this room than we are, so I ask this, that you would move among the tables right now for every sickness, physical sickness, that you would come and move right now. Move among us. Touch us. Bring our bodies into order according to your will and plan. From the top of your head to the bottom of your feet, be healed in the name of Jesus. I speak that because the Lord heals. The Lord touches bodies. For emotional pain and hurt and destruction, I pray now, God, touch our hearts and our minds. Remind us of your love and your peace and your comfort and your healing power beyond any circumstance. Thank you, Father. Thank you that our circumstances do not dictate your promises in our life. Thank you for that, Lord. Move among us right now, Father. We love you, Lord. We love you. Thank you, Lord. Girls, I just feel like we're going to do this. And you think that's an abrupt prayer. God's fine with it. Listen, this is what we need to do. We need to activate healing. We need to activate our own healing. We need to be participants and not just consumers. Okay? So you're on duty now. Check your garbage at the door right now. We all have it. Trust me. We all have it. Check it at the door right now, and I want you to open up your hearts and say, Lord, here I am. Send me. Now, if you are a visitor, and you're like, oh, my freaking gosh, the lady's going to have me do something. Relax. You don't have to do anything, okay? Just relax. Now, I just want you to look around, and I, and I want to say this. And I know this, you know, I don't like all the, let's get this weird, you know, environment, lower the lights, and get some music playing. You don't need music. Come on. God's here. Look around, girls. Look at the beauty in this room. Is there somebody right now, and this is just practical, is there somebody right now that you've kind of felt drawn to since you walked in here? You just thought, oh, I don't know. I didn't know that person. I don't know what it is about them. Or maybe you do know them, and you're thinking, I don't know what to say. I don't want to do. Listen, I just want you to do this. Just go to them anyways. Just get up and start walking. Go up, but when you get to them, if you don't know, you, know, you want to learn how to prophesy, do this. Okay, I feel something, I feel something, I don't know what it is. Okay, I'm going to be obedient, Lord, because I feel a draw. I, and just start walking, okay? You get there, okay? I'm sitting here just for the sake of the mic. You get there, okay? No words coming, I don't know what to say. You know what? Hug the person, okay? Give them a hug. Tell them they're beautiful. You know, get talking and communicating and, and forgetting about you and involving be present in somebody else's life and then you can say this oh this is really deep theology hey how are you is there anything I can pray for you about why do we always think I gotta get this supernatural listen God's gonna talk to you okay you don't have to make it so hard oh I'll be the real prophet if I get the word before I get up there oh my gosh I would never prophesy I am too cluttered in my brain for God to get through. So sometimes he just says, honey, just start walking. Just go. I'll let you know as we go, you know? And then you just begin to pray for them. And then the person doesn't want to talk. Oh, you know what? Well, you know, okay, number one, if they're Christian, you can say this. You know what? I don't know what it is. Can I just pray for you? Yes, okay? I'm just going to pray blessing in your life. I'm going to pray God's kingdom come and God's will be done in you. That he would provide for you all your daily provision. That he'd lead you away from temptation and evil. That he would help you to forgive in any areas you need to be forgiven or need to forgive. And I just pray that over you right now. Then you know what happens. Most of you know this. You're, you're seasoned Christians. You know. A lot of times a word will come. And you'll be going, you know what? I just, oh, I just got the scripture for you. And then it just comes out naturally. Okay? And if it's not a Christian, you can just go up and love them and pay attention to them. And hey, how, you know... How are you? What's going on in your life? Or, um, you know, what's the, where'd you get that outfit? And, oh, my God, I love TJ Maxx, too. And, you know, you get talking to somebody, and all of a sudden, the next thing you know, how many of you have been in that situation? They pour out their life to you. Mm -hmm. 
And then it's like, you know what? You poured out your life to me. Why well, I pour out my life to you. But not in a weird, like, well, I'm going to give you Jesus. No, it's like, you know what? I totally get where you're coming from. And I went through that too. And then I, I don't know what you believe about this, but this is what I believe. There's a God of love and he can help you. It can be that beautifully simple. We are not, why, why do we have to be so weird? Just be, just be present and be aware of God, Christ in me, the hope of glory. Wherever I go, I walk into a room and it's not because I'm in ministry. It's because I have Jesus. Jesus shouldn't be in air quotes. It's because I have Jesus. Okay, when I walk in with Christ in me, I change the atmosphere of a room. Not because Susie's amazing, because she's not. She's a mess up. It's because he's amazing, and I give him room to work. Let's give each other room to work. So here's our assignment right now. Now look around. If there's somebody around you that you feel you need to go to, you need to get your butt up and go there fast before somebody else grabs them, okay? Now, if you're not feeling that, that's okay. Turn to the person beside you, grab their hand, so we're all gonna pair up with one person, and the odd person, I'll take the odd. Pair up with one person, um, <laughs> the odds meet together. And then I want you to just look at them and say, how can I pray for you? And take turns, okay? All right? I don't need to explain this. Right, girls? Go! Go! Do it!